Hey guys, Pete here. Getting ready to talk the Expanse Season 6, Episode 5. As you know, Why We Fight was the penultimate episode in this short final season. And I gotta say that I'm not ready for this thing to end. There's so much good stuff in this episode, and I'm here with Benja from Benja TV channel. Do you want to say hello? Hi guys, I agree with Pete. This, this is just too soon for it to end, but here we are. Yeah, and we'll be talking all things Expanse. You can ask us questions about 605 or anything about the Expanse in general. As far as spoilers, we won't be talking about anything beyond this episode of the TV show. So if you're caught up there, you'll be fine. And I think, you know, this is this is probably going to take a while to get through, so we should probably jump right into it. I'll just say that, yeah, if you're worried about it, if you're not caught up, this is your chance to leave. And let's go and talk about this X-ray feature first. Yes, we always start with these ones. And this week's was quite interesting because we this this one shows how Holden joined the Canterbury crew. And I know you've got a lot to say about this, so I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, um, you know, this was... I think I heard about this, that they were going to do this in one of the comments on one of my videos. And I was I was kind of disappointed, one, because I heard this was the last X-ray, that there wasn't another one. But when I first saw this, I was like, oh, well, this is, you know, this this shot right here. I was like, oh, well, he looks exactly the same. What's going on? You know <laughs> what I mean? And then I was I was pleasantly surprised when we went back and um you know this this mural I thought that was a great way to kick things off remembering how that you know that that whole campaign of remember the cant back in the early early part of the story and um then they they brought back also a couple of you know easy to recognize characters they were like these are like pretty pretty side character, you know, they're not they're not like they didn't have big roles but very memorable ones. So, you know what I mean? It was like oh, look, it's that guy. It's the Gaunt <laughs> Belter, you know, and the other guy, I think his name in the credits he was listed as what was it? Like Surly Belter or something like that. So, these characters, they didn't have names because of, you know, the role that they played, but it was great to see Captain McDowell can't come back. I made the connection that he's actually in Station Eleven. I've been watching that, and I didn't realize it was the same guy until I saw this. Wasn't his and, Wasn't his hair shorter in season one? Yeah, is it, is I, I have a picture of them together that we'll we'll look at. But huh. I was just going to say the same thing. They did do a great job of de aging Holden. Oh yeah. McDowell, though, he looks exactly like seven years of, has passed. You know what I mean? He looked, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they, did, they didn't do the same for him, which is kind of funny when you think about it. But it, he's still recognizable. And like I said, we have the Gaunt Belter. He was the face of series in episode one. This guy right here. He, you know, he was the one that was talking about the problems that the Belters face on series whenever... Miller and Adlock were talking and getting oriented with the area. And uh, then this guy, he showed up in, what was it, season two, episode eight. And it's the first episode where we met Prax. And that was just such a, a great scene that he was involved in. He, can't, he came, do you remember this one? He came in and he... Not really, he, no. He separated out the the people from the inner planets. And he said, "Oh, we're going to transfer you to another ship," and he ends up spacing them. So you know, we had just met this character Prax, and 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 he's you know being brought back by this woman that he knew from Ganymede, who happened to be an Earther or a Martian. I, I don't remember what her backstory was, but our introduction to him and to this situation was him watching his friend get spaced, which was, was crazy. Really so it was, 
Yeah, so I really liked how they how they did that with this and these guys, you know, they popped up and it, it's it's fun to see that and it's not it, it's not superfluous, you know what I mean? They have a they had a memorable role in the series, so it's nice to bring them back at the end to kind of tie things up. Yeah. So yeah, what did you and think about young Holden here? I mean, I think people are saying that Ty confirmed that he just shaved and they didn't do anything special to, I guess, de-age him. So, yeah, you know, that's what I heard. I guess, you know, I'm like that too. If I shave, I, I look I look at least five years younger. I guess that's what they did here. Eh? But I think he, he did look younger. They did a good job Absolutely. with him. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, yeah. I I thought they did a fantastic job showing where he came from. Yeah, what a journey this guy's had from literally just looking to do the least amount possible and skate by without any real responsibility. The show never really had a chance to make that part of his character as clear as it is when you read the book, because you know you have his thought process there, and even though he's He's clearly like a, a reluctant hero type in the show, and his idealistic nature causes him problems. I always enjoy that added dimension to the character that he's more than that. He's actually kind of a slacker. He gets kicked out of the Navy, and then he's just trying to get by without any problems. And then you look at all, everything that happened in the last six seasons, and it's pretty pretty hilarious. And the, the chance occurrence of the way that McDowell met him that we see here in this short and how that led to him crewing up and meeting the future Rossi family, it's a perfect reminder for how epic the journey they've all had together is going. I mean, it's a perfect reminder of that, of that journey and what a fun setup for the series finale. I'm really going to miss this show. And I'm, it's just, there's so many, there's just, it's, it's a great, it's a great um, full circle kind of moment. Yeah. I think that, I think it was neat because it makes you think, you know, if it wasn't for this uh, binary, if, if Holden didn't make the right uh, binary decision here and he said no to join up, None of what we show, none of what we see on the show would have happened. This would have been a completely different timeline. So, all of what we've seen comes to this one single decision, and I guess that makes this extra episode the more the most um, important one among all the ones we've had. So, I think that part is quite neat. If this was a network show, for example, they with twenty two episodes per season, they could have done an episode where Holden doesn't join up with the crew. And they show yeah. this al alternative <laughs> timeline that that made me think of that. Yeah, you know, this this single decision changed the course of history. So I, so this extra episode was by far by far my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Amos references this later whenever he's in series at a bar, also about how Holden literally saved all of humanity a couple of times in this series. So. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been quite a different if this had not happened. It would have been a quite quite a different setup, and who knows who would have been who would have stepped into that role. Uh, should we move on to Laconia, or do you have something else to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say here's a picture of them in the oh. whenever he's in this scene from uh, season one where he's trying to get him to take on the XO role and he just doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He just doesn't want the responsibility <laughs> at all. <laughs> and as, as we and were look, talking look at about, McDowell, man, he, he yeah. looks nothing like his current state. Yeah. So yeah, I think we can move on to Laconia now. All right. There we see that Kara's idea to quote unquote fix his dead brother Zan works. And this is where we'll start our actual episode discussion. Uh, what did you what did you think about the sequence? Because we all kind of us non book readers kind of guessed this this is where it was going, but um, we knew there would be a twist, and the twist was that Zan doesn't really appear <laughs> how how could you normal? I guess he doesn't exactly appear normal. How did you uh, what did you think about the sequence? 
Well, I think that there's not a whole, I don't think there's really a whole lot we can say, or we should say at this point, because there's this, this one out of all of them seemed like a part one of two, you know what I mean? Like they, they sort of stopped this and at, at a point where you're not supposed to know exactly what's going on with him. I think that it was super fun. I thought that I was when I was rewatching this again yesterday, I thought that the the one line where she's talking to him about that he got killed, you know, you got hurt and you got hurt bad, you got killed and he's just like, "Oh." <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was super funny. Like he uh, the but I mean, there was one thing that I didn't really mention in my recap and that was that he uses the word substrate and that's interesting for book readers. I don't think Miller ever used the term in the show. But that first comes up whenever he's talking to Holden about why he needs him to connect the circuit in the ring station, which happened in season three, episode 10. He needs him because he exists in the physical world. And that is they refer to that as the substrate. And they is mysterious in that you don't know who they are but this idea of substrate is being in the physical world so but he is back he's then i guess his personality seems he knows his sister he answers her questions as if he understands who she is and what's going on there's definitely some other stuff i mean he there's a there's a shot here where he says i've never seen that before and he looks and there's nothing there so it's something that he can see that she can't see and i think you know since i know what's going to happen i, I what well, i think what a, a question i want to ask a non book reader is how do you think he's going to be received by the other laconians do you think the dogs actually fixed him or what do you think's going on here i think they're going to freak out naturally because uh I think they made a point to show that um, almost everybody visited um, Zan's wake. Even Duarte was there. So they saw his dead body with their own eyes. I think they put that scene there intentionally because um, they've seen his dead body and now they're going to just freak out, not understanding how he can be alive. And they're going to, they're gonna, I guess, treat him like a creature, in my opinion. I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen, but uh, if I know anything about humanity, it, that's what's going to happen. He might be tre treated really harshly. Uh, they might do experiments on him. So, rough going. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I touched on this a bit in the last live stream, so I, I don't want to dwell too long because we have so much other stuff to get into. But I, that's what I said about this book that I always liked is that it's from a kid's perspective. So the way she reacts to him, she doesn't even, she's just like, cool, I had this problem and it got solved. You know what I mean? My brother was <laughs> dead and now he's not. Let's party. You know what I mean? Let's. And so, yeah, you're, you're right to think that the grownups and the people who are in charge there aren't going to, aren't likely to react in the same way. Especially, you know, if the black eyes remain just black, <laughs> that's not going to be good for him. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see it on the screen, but th their skin is quite different too. Um, whenever this, you know, his, his skin is like it's supposed to be kind of gray and black, and and his movements are also noticeably different. So he's he's definitely creepy. Yeah. Uh, I guess we we could probably move on from there. I, I, I think maybe we could talk a little bit more about this at the end as it relates to some of the other things that are going on, though. Exactly. So do, you wanna, uh, do you want to read the Super Chat? Yeah, so TM Martin, thank you for the $5. <laughs> Hi, Pete, Benja, and all. <clears throat> Any truth to the rumors there's going to be an Expanse movie special with the time jump? I'm not sure exactly what rumors um, you're referring to. There was a article that came out maybe two weeks ago that said that there was talks going on. 
And Ty did debunk that. He said that that was completely fiction. That was complete work of fiction. The guy who wrote the article just made it up that they, that, and that they want to do it, but they don't have any offers. At least that's what he said in, in his tweet. So I, I think anything that's saying that there's going to be a movie special is just speculation at this point. Yeah, I think we talked about this uh, a couple of streams ago as well. And I said, <laughs> we've never heard anybody making things up on the internet. So don't, yeah. don't believe everything you read, on, you, you read on here. So Especially with stuff like this that people really like and they want it to continue. So people, so, you know, writers are going to, news writers or article writers are going to probably make some things up. So you don't believe everything you hear would be my yeah i could i could i could definitely put out a video tomorrow that said something similar to that <laughs> exactly and i can i can anticipate that it would have a lot of views it All wouldn't right. make it true though unfortunately if only if only i mean imagine you saying something and then it's coming true magic <laughs> i think we can move on to the soul ring because we have an amazing scene here. Uh, there's another big reveal after the Laconia scene. Uh, we watch the MCRM try to capture the Soul Ring, but they're in for a rude awakening. Turns out the Free Navy has placed railguns on the ring station surface, and they destroy the Martian fleet that's attacking the ring. Carino, who just came back to the show, is among the casualties. There's nothing. There's nothing quite like a battle scene from The Expanse, is there? So. On top of the great action, this one also features an interesting twist with the with the ring station railguns. I guess RSRG stands for that. So yep. I'm curious to hear what you have to say here, please. Well, I have to say R.I.P. Carino for sure. They brought her back. Rip. And yeah, she's um, no longer with us. I guess this felt like a completely planned or it felt like it was competently planned and they did everything right here. It looked like it was a well executed sneak attack that resulted in a massive loss of life and ships for the MCRN. We'll talk more about the railguns in a bit, but one thing that I liked about this scene was the way that it opened with the flying torpedo. It was kind of flying in silence. And then the way it drew back as the score kicked in, I thought that was really cool. And the way that they framed the ring, the ring gate, like across the screen horizontally, instead of the normal way where we see it, I thought that was all, those were all really interesting decisions. And, you know, like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about the rail guns, but I think the big takeaway from this is that this was a competent, plan with the high tech the most high tech ships that they have and they all got wiped out wiped out like no problem yeah and i guess we can move on to the pella because uh, marco's getting a little bit worried about his movement his cause because uh, drummer put a spanner in the works with her statement and rosenfeld thinks they should just focus on getting to medina and controlling the ring gate because that's where the real prize is. If you control that, you control access to 1300 systems. And during this conversation, they learn about the failed MCRN attack we just talked about at the ring gate, which obviously boosts their morale. Uh, and like you said, this was a really solid plan Marco had, and now they're burning towards the ring gates to establish their new base of operations. And so what do you think about this, this plan by Marco? And um, I guess I can't ask you if, if he's going to be successful, but um, it, well, I think does, this does it really sound the, solid to you? Yeah. Yeah, I think this is really the first time we get the full picture of what he's planning. And the show, we don't get to see this. He shifts, you know, he's, he's, he actually changes his mind and, and decides to go this way. And here it's all been kind of mysterious, but now that it's out there, you have to give him credit, I think. This is a solid plan. 
it's actually similar to what Fred Johnson like was planning to do his big plan for Medina station and how he wanted to be, keep the belt involved. And he was doing it in that way of like, they were going to have Medina. He was going to, they were going to have to go through him, but he was going to try to use that politically to work with them and increase his own standing and his own ability to talk to and influence the inners here. Marco's just taking it over. He's reinforcing it. And yeah, this is a good, this is like, he can, everything that, everything that Rosenfeld said to him to get him back on track after he sort of got upset about Iopetus was true. And and that's why he did it, and she understands this, and she's just reinforcing it. Yeah. Whenever just, she, whenever they have control of that choke point, and all the resources and everything else that are beyond those rings, that that exact it, same line makes me think <laughs> this is just too good to be true for Marco, because where is he getting those guns, you know? And how are are the people's, you know? Are people giving him the material to make those uh, railgun systems? Really gonna let him uh, ke keep controlling the ring? I don't know. That just made me think of that. Sorry it is to, an interesting question you bring up. One that I can't answer, obviously. But... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, keep your eyes peeled, I guess, because um, they they can't. You know, whoever's giving. Where is helping Marco? I guess we'll discuss that when we move on to the Zenobia as well. Uh, whoever's giving him the material to the metal to make those weapons, uh, they they must they must have a plan in mind to take care of Marco once he's served his purpose, I suppose. Yeah, and they do make it explicit that it's coming from Laconia. Oh. The the rail guns were were assembled and delivered from from the Laconia system, but that's all we know about it right now. I guess we can move move on to the Zenobia to talk about uh, the, the weapon system as well. Then, since we're on the subject, yep. Are uh, we checking on the Zenobia to find out how they are reacting to the Ringgate news? They know that the rail gun is a Martian design, but the metal it's made out of is something they've never seen before. Uh, the metal is from, like you said, a, from a planet in the Laconia system. And I tried to listen to this part carefully to understand how they installed the weapons, how all of this works, and from what I understand, the setup is practically impenetrable. Is that right? Yeah, I was wondering how, how the, the, I mean, obviously, when you read the book, you get the whole idea of how they're installing it and everything. In the show, they decided to keep that as a mystery. But I was wondering if people were picking up on on what's actually going on here, because the, the, ra the, the rail guns are mounted on the surface. They can't drill into the surface of the ring station. It just doesn't work. So what they did was they made these giant bands um, titanium bands that wrap all the way around and sort of hold it in these different, you know, there's six of the rail guns and they're in different places, all, all sort of together. And it, it, the setup is badass. It's like, it's basically flawless as a defense system. Um, as you like, if you it, the, they mentioned the infinite inertia, and that's the, the thing is, is when you fire a giant railgun like that, it has there's an there's a there's an equal and opposite reaction because of the way that the the ring station is. It doesn't move. That energy goes somewhere, but it doesn't affect it in in the space. So when they fire it, there's no recoil or kickback or whatever you call it in a railgun. It just sits there perfectly. So they can they can just fire, they can just aim and fire in all of those different directions <laughs> throughout the, the ring space. And that's just that's how they just made a meal out of the MCRN. Yeah, because there's only they have the advantage. They have the they have the advantage of surprise there as well, 
but there's really no time to react. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's a short, relatively speaking in the giant expanse of space, it's a relatively short amount of distance that that has to, to cover once they start to shoot at the, at those ships. So this new information puts the inners in a difficult spot as they have to capture Marco before he gets to the ring gate. But if they go after him now, they'd have to abandon Ceres. So they've got a tough choice to make. And even if they go ahead and enact this plan to go after Marco, there's a chance they will fail. And in this situation, you don't want to be the one having to make the tough choices, do you? No, it's difficult because of the reasons that you just laid out. And as you watch them talk through the options, they, they bring up the idea of just shooting a bunch of fast nukes in there. We know what happened when they detonated a nuke near the station. Just nuke it. Just three. nuke it. Don't question. <laughs> the yeah, best plan not, ever. It's, it, it's definitely something that has a lot of unknowns in it. Like what's going to happen after we do that. And there is the potential for the ring station to destroy entire systems that's happened you know so they don't they have to be careful in that regard and when you hear them talk through the options you get a pretty good idea that besides the mistake of going after the rossi marco did have he's he's doing he's doing pretty well. He has a decent strategy to fall back on even after he lost the Azor dragon and all the rocks that were f pointed at earth. I, yeah. So I think that that's one of the, I mean, I think obviously how, how strong of a defense this is and just how, if he does get there, they'll be able to stay there forever. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, I mean, it's just mm. the way it is. And I, I wonder, you know, she, whenever Bobby and Abbasarala are talking, she feels that she may have made a mistake about not sending ships with Carino. My thought was that it really wouldn't have changed much in this engagement. Maybe they Absolutely. would have been able to keep some people back, but I don't think more, more ships would have actually, you know, done the job of overtaking this the ring space so i think it, it all goes to that there's there's one part about this that kind of you know it, it seems to me that you sort of have to overlook the idea that they don't have any intelligence assets or some way of finding out what he's doing inside the ring in order for this to be the surprise that it turned out to be but as it stands it seems to be impenetrable there's not, you know, there's no good options here other than to chase him, which we know is pretty terrible also. Yeah, and because of this, Bobby gives Abusarala a pep talk uh, after everyone else leaves. And Bobby, I thought, was almost speaking for the audience here because um, he was trying to boost Abusarala's morale, you know. It was a great moment because Abusarala needed it. This isn't the time to ponder over your feelings and... Bobby let her knew. Uh, how did you react to this interaction? Did you did, did Bobby did Bobby surprise you because she she was talking to the Secretary General this way? Yeah, I loved it for that reason. I liked how you saw her. It takes her a minute to get there. Abasarala has to actually push her buttons. She's not doing it on purpose, <laughs> but that's the way it plays out, right? Yeah, and. Abbasarala second guessing herself makes total sense because she's got all these different things going on. So yeah, you know, I I I get that. And Bob but Bobby is right. There's not there's there's no there's no easy choices, but the choice to not fight back isn't really going to it's going to guarantee that he gets in there and he has control of that ring space and that'll be on her. That everyone in the rest of soul system will be thinking that she dropped the ball. And so unfortunately, or maybe fortunately considering where this takes us and we'll get to that in a minute, but they're going to need some help here. They can't actually do it on their own. Yeah. Which is why, 
I was rather seeks out. But before we get to that, uh, we have two scenes on the Rossi. One of them involves Clarissa and Holden as she tells him that the UN engineers want to reinforce the Rossi's hull. Hull. Uh, this reminds Clarissa of her father, Jules Pierre Mao, because this hull, I guess, is from Prada Molecule Research. And this is the second callback to Jules Pierre Mao this season. We had uh, the X ray episode about him and Clarissa. And she thinks this makes it seem like he was right to continue experimenting with the Prada Molecule because. They're now benefiting from it. Uh, what did you What did you think about this short scene here? Yeah, I didn't really touch on this Clarissa conversation in my recap, and I like how it brings to mind the inevitability of humans using the proto molecule to advance things. This carbon silicate uh, plating that she's talking about. It's only possible by them studying the protomolecule. And we saw some of this with Prax as well. His his food solution also comes from some of that research. And Larissa is torn personally because of the, me the methods that her father used and the lengths he went to try to control it. He was responsible for a lot of dead people. <laughs> I mean, Eros... Um, Project Caliban with the children and the hybrids, basically just using people as guinea pigs. And he started a war to, you know, get get keep people from looking into what he was doing. So he's did things in a very bad way, and you know that's that's not really a question. But as dastardly as he was, there was some truth in his belief that someone was going to do what he did. He he looked at it from, you know, he just, it might as well be him because he was powerful enough that no one could stop him or even really tell him that he was wrong. And he just went to town because it would have made him the most powerful person in the solar system. But, you know, the advancements were going to come of this. And I guess, you know, the, the way that it would be, you know, the way that it, it would work out the best is if everyone had a sample of it and everyone was able to, you know, do their do their research and share their results. But that's not the way it played out. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting to see that through the lens of Clarissa. It it does make that X-ray a little more poignant in that situation too, with her dealing with his loss. And yeah, I thought this was a this. There's not a really a lot of time for this season to to explore this side of it, but I, I thought this was a, a, something that needed a little more conversation because it it. You know, there is a parallel to what's happening on Laconia with Duarte at the same time. Yeah, and if this season was longer, I think uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if this is in the books, but I think we might have seen Prax uh, actually on the show having his own storyline instead of just a message. I think that would have been great if the season was longer. Yeah, they in the books it it there are he has he comes back as a point of view character and it does it shows what the occupation of Ganymede underneath the free navy looks like and that's the side story as he's developing that and he eventually gets it to 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 earth and Ty did say that they had in their initial plan when they they didn't know they had to pare it down to six episodes that that was one of the things that they were gonna that they had to cut was was Prax's storyline. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, we can move on to Doctor Yavi Okoye. Uh, she makes an appearance to inform Naomi about the missing ship data. She believes there's a mass energy threshold that precedes or maybe even triggers the disappearance events. So every time someone travels through the ring gate. There's a chance the unknown aggressors, the orange entities, will appear again. Uh, what what did you what did you make of this piece? Because uh, I'm, I was glad to see Okoye once again. She I think she sent a message. She sent a message to Holden in season five as well. And um, yeah, so uh, she's yeah. Back it's again. nice to see, yeah. It's nice to see LB make an appearance. 
she's a, a recurring character. <clears throat> she's a recurring character in the books and one of my favorites. It does look like here that she made it off of Illus. That's the last, I think the, the message she sent to Holden last season that came from Illus. So she had still been there. Now this, this message says that she it was sending it from Europa lab. So I guess she's near Jupiter in the Jupiter system. Yeah, and it, I, I'm glad they that they were able to incorporate some of these people. What she has found here is is pretty big is pretty big information. It's one of those things where you don't really know how that can what can be done about it, and because of everything else that's going on, no one's really going to pay attention to this. We'll see that in the next. Uh, interaction between Holden and and Abisarala. but what what was your take on what she was saying? Did you did you have any ideas about that? Because obviously I know what 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 she's talking about here. Yeah, and I think um, this goes back to what Holden was saying, you know, a few seasons ago, last season. Uh, he was talking about how these these unknown aggressors were. Um, were getting angry whenever they traveled, when whenever humans traveled through the ring gates, and uh, it is theorized that uh, they destroyed the Protomalchus civilization. So, uh, and this and this mass energy threshold, I suppose, is whenever, <laughs> uh, whenever there there's there's a um, massive discharge of energy that uh, that goes above a certain threshold, they. Um, they appear once again and attack. It's a good, it's a good, I, I mean, I, I can follow what you're saying. I can't confirm or deny anything about it, but, but it's important, my, obviously. I mean, you know, whenever my, they, you know, you know, whenever they end the season with uh, this, this happening to the Bar Keith, that it's going to be important later. Yeah, my it's problem is, you know, we had, we had Bar Keith last season, so I was, Without knowing about the books, I was expecting this storyline to play a more active role. So, you know, from a non-book reader perspective, this is this the progress on this storyline has been a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I see. Yeah, they changed it up a lot in the TV show too, because in in the book, Naomi gets obsessed with this on her own in relation to they're all getting debriefed and she's getting really she's getting it really bad because she was actually she's the person that knows marco better than anyone that they you know so they want to know everything about that so they're trying to interrogate her and figure out like what's going on the is she uh, can they trust her and what does she know that she can tell them about marco so that they can get rid of him and so she she goes in t and she's also lost because of what happened with Philip and the whole situation. So she kind of gets obsessed with solving this problem. I liked how they did that here where they just sort of used it to show like Holden gets interested first and then they sort of they sort of used it to show how their relationship is and they used it and you know he says I'll give you this problem and she realizes he's doing that because <laughs> it'll make her feel better. I thought that part was, was pretty cool. She figured it out in the books by herself. And so LV is, is kind of an addition here. I mean, I, I guess it, it's all good. I guess I, 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 I kind of, I kind of liked that she figured it out in the books by herself, but I don't think it really changes things too much. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can move on to the Tynan now. Uh, drummer is closing in on series with the cargo she liberated liberated but uh, un officers are trying to make this difficult for her and her ships osrala intervenes to say drummer and her crew are welcome on the station and she tries to arrange a meeting here but uh, drummer asserts she's there for the belters not avasarala i definitely appreciated avasarala's confidence here i think she knew <laughs> she knew what drummer's reaction would be <laughs> But uh, would you turn down a meeting with the Secretary General, Pete? Because Drummer did. And it absolutely yeah, what, suits her character. 
Yeah, it is pretty boss boss like, I think, to do that. I mean, that would be the, you know, if the president or prime minister of wherever called you up and said, hey, I wanted to have a conversation with you. And you're <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm kind of busy right now. So, yeah, Doing that, a live was... stream with P right now, so I can't, I can't answer. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that, it, I thought this was just flat out funny. I mean, it's not, it, it's, it's lighthearted. And I thought that was great. And I thought it was delivered perfectly by Kara G., she basically does the whole cycle of everything you can ask an actor to do in this episode. I mean, there's obviously some really heavy stuff we're going to be getting to, but I thought she did this absolutely. I mean, these two coming back and forth, like if you think about the, this is the setup for the big intense showdown at the end of the episode. And here you can see them, you know, just with these little character interaction, that's just fantastic. Yeah, and I, we can uh, talk about the, that heavy, heavy stuff starting with Joseph because his arm isn't really growing properly and they'll have to remove it and redo the procedure. And you can see how much this hurts Drummer. Right? Just br brutal for Joseph. I get, obviously, it hurts more, but uh, in the meantime, yeah. Drummer gets a message from Naomi as well, but uh, she doesn't respond. We saw... Uh, we saw... Um, drummer deleting messages from Naomi that she ar archives and this was I guess a continuation of that uh, what did you think yeah I mean I think for one that sad little baby arm I mean that thing was, <laughs> that thing was something to look at wasn't it and it's pretty messed up that he can't take pain meds he's like in all this pain and the guy says, no, if you, if you do that, it'll just confuse the gel and they'll start growing more nerves for more pain. You know, that sounds Ugh. awful, but yeah. Um, you know, her, her choice not to answer Naomi's message. It was a big, it's a big choice. And it, it kind of hits different. If you didn't watch the x-ray episode where she deleted all those saved messages at the end. Um, I thought that was I thought that was interesting. It's been clear that she has <clears throat> she has more I mean she's in a requ unrequited love situation with Naomi. She's in love with her. She wants her to be a part of this thing that she has going on and Naomi's dedicated to Holden. She's not she's she has feelings for a drummer but they're not the same and the writers have made that clear in different things. You know they've they've clarified that just in case because maybe in the show there's there's it feels like there's a possibility that there's more to it and you can have that but at least for where they're at right now in the story Naomi is not conflicted she she's she knows where she wants to be she wants to be with Holden in that mon monogamous monogamous relationship with him. And so that An Ankawala clip from earlier, the f the first X-ray, it showed that she's trying to find some resolution because she's not going to get the outcome she wants. And these feelings have cost her so much in relation to her family. And that's continuing to play out here. And then she gets this message and you can see, you, you know, that feeling, you know, whenever you see that message from that person that has that kind of hold on you and you think, you know, I got other stuff going on here. I don't want to think about, I don't want to think about Naomi, but exactly. you know, it, it's, 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 it's an interesting setup for what we're going to see later. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, but uh, we, we have another scene from the Pella as Philip learns that Tadeo is in the brig because he tried to get in touch with his brother on series, which is obviously not something that's allowed. Uh, Philip feels bad for him and finds out that Tadeo's brother is dead. Uh, Tadeo's stunned because he was on the crew that planted the bombs and rigged the docks to blow, so he holds himself responsible. They assure him that Belters wouldn't get hers, but here he is. His brother is dead. Uh, I guess this was quite an interesting moment for Tadeo, but it was also interesting for Philip. Uh, did you expect to see this emotional moment between them? I was actually a little surprised at how well this interaction with these two came off. It's a little wedged in there with everything else that's going on. Like it, it there's, 
these, as you, th if you think about the hierarchy of characters that we spent time with, and the the just the in, intense dramatic showdowns and conversations and things that happen, this is kind of pretty low on that on that scale on that list, right? And I think both of the actors. They made it work pretty well. And, you know, just building off that little bit of time they had together in the repair skiff. And I, you know, I feel bad for the, for Tadeo here. It's a tough situation and it's the kind of thing that sticks with you, you know? Yeah. And it once again shows how the Free Navy and Marco's plans manipulate these people. Absolutely. And he, you know, he can blame himself. He he will probably blame himself for the rest of his life. You can tell him objectively, or you can tell him, you know, that, hey, it's not your fault, but this is the kind of thing that you never really shake. And and that kind of that's going on with so many different people on so many levels as a result of this war, right? Yeah, and people in the chat, a few people are saying. How naive, how naive are you to think that uh, Belters wouldn't get hurt? But you know, we have examples of s similar things in the real world, where people think they're on, they think they're only hurting the enemy. But you know, I, I won't go into details here. But I think you yeah, can, I think it's you can just, sense what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just the complicated nature of this. He doesn't have a choice. That's the story he has to tell himself. To be able to sleep at night it doesn't matter if it's if it's naive or not he's in a situation where he signed up this is his life he's got to do a job and he's going to grasp on to that idea that nobody else is going to get hurt only the right people are going to get hurt because that's what you have to do in order to function in a situation like that that's the human side of it right yeah and i did see an interesting comment here i'm not sure if it's true but i wanted to ask you about this he says the bomb said Martian stealth tech, adding, adding, he says this. Uh, could this the be true? Because, because, yeah, because they weren't spotted. I mean, <laughs> I, I had never, I had never, I never really, I mean, I understand thinking that there's something going on there, why they wouldn't have been able to find them, but I, I have never, I honestly have had not thought about that. Yeah, until because... right this second. I don't think they do a good job of explaining how they were able to hide those there. I mean, you would think that they would have come in with some pretty good sweeping technology to be able to find anything that was there and they didn't find them. I mean, this didn't happen. They didn't it didn't explode right when they got there. There was a, there was a delay. I don't think that I don't recall the show actually. Oh, I don't think the show that. did that. Yeah, no. The show didn't address it. Um, I think we can move on to Rosenfeld as she continues to be a great XO. She boosts the crew's morale by gifting them a rare Earther bandy to celebrate the victory at the gate. She also shows Marco the speech his son gave after Drummer's message, trying to prove to Marco that Philip is not a lost cause. So, this is getting. I, I don't want to say. <laughs> over the top, but um, Rosenfeld is, I think, playing a much bigger role than I thought. She she is involved in every decision Marco makes, and she always try to, tries to steer Marco. I'm not sure if this much involvement by her is totally realistic. Uh, what do you think? Now, this part was well, didn't isn't isn't what bothered me, by the way. But uh, her overall involvement in Marco's every single decision is a little bit over the top. I think. I, I don't know. I I mean, I I think that there has to be someone that that to fill that void. There's no one. I mean, I, I guess they could maybe have done a better job of showing other people jockeying for a position at his side or something like that, but. I think, I think, you know, my takeaway from the character was just that she was smart enough to know how to stroke Margo's, Marco's ego 
And, you know, you see another example of it here where he, she's showing him something his son did and he's like, oh, I wonder where he got that from, you know, good old dad, you know, so... <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I I I I didn't really I just figure that these two like he needs somebody to be there when Philip isn't. And that's really the the void that she she's keying up on that 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 is there. If if things had been, if things had gone right between Philip and Marco, it would be them standing there talking strategy. So, you know, that I, I I think that my takeaway on the character was just that they can read the situation, they can pick up on when there's an opportunity, and they can actually capitalize on that. And she's now in line to be the governor of Medina Station. So uh, I said last impre- I said last week if I was wondering if you know she would turn on Marco, but I'm still thinking about that. Maybe. She's gonna strike a deal with whoever's gunning for Marco, maybe someone in Laconia. I don't know. My theory mind is going insane right now. I think we can move yeah. on to Zenobia. Avasarala and Holden are reunited. Uh, she was with Monica before Holden arrived, so we'll talk about that first. Uh, we learned that the Lucky Earther piece has done well. Uh, Avasarala mentions that uh, Praxis findings look promising as well. And they might be able to up uh, the food product production on Earth. And lastly, we see Avasarala taking an injection just as Holden arrives. Uh, we see, we saw that we saw in an X-ray episode that uh, Avasarala wasn't in a great uh, condition in terms of health, and uh, these injections sound intriguing. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I actually, this is something I don't really know what's going on. I thought this was kind of surprising when she did that. That, but that, what the first time I watched it, I hadn't seen the X-ray though, so I wasn't. It was really out of context. I, I guess, I mean, she mentioned she was getting a medication from the doctor when we saw that health check on her, her tablet. It was mostly exhaustion. It was from what you could read, and it was saying that she should need to get she needed to get rest, which obviously she's not doing. So yeah. I guess that this could this could be a medication from the doctor that's related to some underlying thing, or it just could be what she's saying that it's a stimulant so that she can power through. I'm not um, sure if I'm missing something with that or not. I think that that's that's it's you know she's burning the candle at both ends and she's <laughs> hitting up the doctor for some some feel good stuff to to make it through. I also I also liked it when um, Alasarala said I should up my dosage and yeah, Holden was like what <laughs> what what are you talking about? <laughs> that that part was pretty funny as well. This one had quite a few funny moments. This episode. But uh, Holden yeah. is mainly there to uh, share Okoye's findings with. Uh, sorry, he Holden wants to share Okoye's findings with the Free Navy, hoping that they would yeah. stop. But Avasarala rightly argues that that is ridiculous. The Free Navy would never stop. He tells him about yeah. the railguns on the ring station, asserting that they need to end the war before they can worry about the future. Uh, and she knows she needs a Belter ally. We talked about this earlier. Uh, to improve their chances, and she would like Holden to arrange a meeting with a uh, drummer. So uh, what did you think about this move by Avasarala? Well, I just wanted to say first that the uh. I, I thought that was that was great how the Lucky Earther story, you know, it's doing good. Of course, he's, you know, getting death threats, but that's <laughs> to be expected, you know. <laughs> it's like not much then. has changed over the centuries, right? It's... Of course, if he's getting attention, somebody wants to kill him for for working with the other side. But yeah, I mean, Holden sounds ridiculous here, but he's really not wrong either. I mean, it. it I don't know how much you need to say about it because the rail guns, him finding out about the rail guns, changes the focus. But his fears are valid, and I. I like the line that she threw out there saying we can't afford the luxury of worrying about the future until we end this war. 
it, it, it's another thing that just shows that this is these are extreme times and and it's they kind of referenced that whenever they were talking about joseph's arm too they, they said oh we in normal time we'd be able to do it like this but this isn't normal time and yeah it, it's all it all comes down to the fact that they need drummer strength they they there's it's not something that they can the inners can do by themselves i don't know i mean like i said i think that it sounds ridiculous what holden's saying i I don't think that it necessarily would work but that is a real threat that isn't isn't going to go anywhere you know people are gonna they can't they can't just allow that to happen you know what i mean they have to figure out something right yeah i mean i i get that but you know I get, I get that the idea scenario would be humanity coming together and dealing with the real threat, what appears to be the real threat. But uh, mm-hmm. I think Holden knows too; this just isn't gonna work. Yeah, he does. I mean, he is. I, I don't think that. I doubt that he felt like confused or surprised by by her response. I, like I said, though, it, it kind of all gets brushed aside when they learn about when he learns about the rail guns because that is the 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 problem that they have right now and then we also got christian talking about how belter see her because of you know she she talks back about the about hanging the the belter on hooks the scene that we know about from season one what did you think about this do you see real evolution in this character? Because I mean, she's the kind of character that can talk, you know, can make you think that she's doing what she, what you want, you know, what you want or what you need. And I think she's probably, uh, she's probably being sincere here. Yeah, she's changed a lot, especially you know after the asteroid attacks, after that disaster. Um, she she understands now that uh, her her past ways isn't gonna help solve anything. If if anything, that's gonna thing that's gonna make things worse, as they did. Uh, and um, she's definitely right to worry that uh, the Belters wouldn't see her in a good light. Uh, but yeah. I do agree she's changed. We know that, but the Belters have no way of knowing that. And Drummer definitely says, you know, we know what happens to Belters that trust inners. Yeah. She says that later in the episode. So the Belters have yeah, no they... idea to know if she's really changed. So sh- she's right to be worried. Yeah, and she did lose a lot. I mean, she lost her husband. She lost her son before that. And she's losing the planet that that's kind of in the back of of the you know on the back of the list or back of the you know bottom of the list right now but the planet is dying i mean she does reference praxis thing looks promising here and that that's probably going to help but she's got a, she's got a lot of things to worry about and exactly. a lot of, and that's all, that's all motivation to actually do things differently going forward yeah, uh, we'll get to that. But uh, we have a scene featuring Amos and Bobby. They come across each other on series, and Amos is clearly drunk. This, this just Amos's whole attitude here was absolutely brilliant. He opens up to Bobby, telling her that he might not come back because of what Holden did. So now Bobby knows about Holden's decision too. Bobby says that in the end, the only thing that matters is fighting for who is covering your flank doesn't matter if they're saints or assholes, they're your people. They watch your back and you watch theirs or you've got nothing. Uh, This makes sense to Amos and he will return to his family on the ship, but first he's gonna visit the brothel brothel once again. He even invites Bobby to join him and this this really made me smile because we talked about this on almost all of our streams. I thought they were kind of flirting with each other and but Amos, I don't know if he did this because he was drunk, but he he definitely didn't hide his intentions. Bobby considers this, but uh, she doesn't go. And I'm wondering what you thought about how Bobby convinced Amos and 
Amos's invitation. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, I mean, I, I wanted to, I just, when we were, when I was looking at this right now, I just wanted to draw attention to this, how, how, how much is going on on this episode? I was just talking about with the Tadeo thing, how that still managed to hit, even though there's all these other heavier moments, and this one is too, but it has that lighthearted side of it because of the situation, because of the way it's set up. Like I really loved how he said at the beginning of this, she she says something about so you're just drinking and fucking or whatever, and he says until they run out of one or the other. <laughs> and I also liked how he he dropped the cap when he was opening the bottle, and he didn't even bother to pick it up because he knows he's gonna finish it. He doesn't need the top, you know what I mean? Like it's just going to, it's completely this bottle is open and it's gonna be consumed and that's it you know he's got he's got his path laid out in front of him and i think that it was a really you know like i said this 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 episode manages to do so many things and i think it's all a good counterweight to the actual like there's a lot of exposition that needs to be doled out as far as setting up where everything's at as far as the finale, right? Like we had to learn about how this railgun works, how his plan is set up, how they have to, you know, I mean, there's a there's just a lot to that that they had to sort of give us, like Holden talking about the 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 ships and then LB talking about what's going on there. You know, there's a lot of of stuff that's just details that are necessary to move forward and then so you have the this balance of these kinds of scenes where we get we get the solution to amos's problem his problem is that he doesn't know what he why he's there anymore because the the six months of chasing down ships that wore the whole crew down and when they get a chance to finish the fight his captain does something he can't understand. And so I thought it was pretty excellent that Bobby laughs it off when she, when she finally learns she's the last person to learn that Holden disabled the nuke. And then also Amos, the way he was calculating things out on the one hand, he's, th- he, you know, he, th- he says, I think that he's trying to get us killed. And on the other, he saved the entire human race a couple of times. So it all balances out. <laughs> But you know, it, it's it it really sets the idea of what they get to. It it really drives that home, right? It's why they fight. That's what the that's where the 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 episode title comes from, and it's sort of what everyone's dealing with in their different way. And it, you know, they're they're his people. That's his family. You know, that's that you you fight for them because they 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 have they fight for you and and what else is there you know if you're not if you're not with them then what are you doing of course they make mistakes and they do things but that's you know that's because they're humans you know what i mean so yeah i think this this is a great segue to um our next subject because joseph has his new arm to move that Mitchell reveals to drummer that She'll stay on series with Joseph. So Drummer has lost her entire family one by one. Uh, three of them, yeah. I think two of them are separated last season. One of them died. Uh, two of them are separating mm-hmm. again, at least uh, until this war ends. And now Drummer's all alone. So on the one hand, we see, you know, Ames deciding to stay with his family. But on the other hand, another family gets separated. Yeah. And I, I just want to I just want to pause on that for a second because I pulled up this super chat a while ago and we haven't okay. we haven't spoke about it yet. But again, thank you, TM Martin, for for the five dollars. Do you think Holden's dis, disarmed nuke will play a key role in the series finale? And P.S. Where is Walker? We didn't actually see Walker in this episode at all, huh? He he he's over on his ship and they didn't really show it. Yeah, maybe he he doesn't really trust the inners as much as the drummer. Yeah, 
he's not taking them at their word and he so, yeah. it definitely suits his character well he he he's he's a known he's a known member of the free navy now that now that i think about it so he may have to hide out in this situation it may not be safe for him <laughs> Exactly. He might find himself on the wrong end of an interrogation if he makes himself uh, known, his presence known. What do you think about this disarmed nuke? I, they, I obviously can't really speculate because I already know what's going to happen. But I do see a lot of people wondering if that's going to come in. And we talked about this a little bit last week. I mean, the main thing I thought when it was first introduced, uh, you know, them discovering this was that it was playing the role of planting a seed of doubt in Philip's mind about whether his mother was the one that disabled it or not. If she was looking out for him in that time, what did you, th what was your, where are you at on that right now? Yeah, I think I said, um, th this is not going to play an important role. You know, some people are speculating that uh, this is this ship, uh, this nuke, sorry, is going to be used to destroy something crucial. But I don't think it's going to play an important role like that. They're definitely reusing the gate, uh, reusing the nuke on the Pella, but I don't, I don't think it's that important in terms of the actual nuke itself. Like I said, it has more of a sentimental, more of an, more of an emotional impact on as to how it impacts Philip and his decision making because he knows someone on the Rasi disabled it. I think, I think they're going to focus on that part rather than the material object so yeah yeah so that yeah i think that we're on the, in the same place with that then yeah exactly so okay we, so we were talking about um about the loss of of family yeah and i mean it's it's just it just keeps coming for drummer right he lost his arm and she lost them and this is like you said is the last of her family they're all gone now she she's it's a it's a terrible setup for naomi to ask her to meet her family <laughs> later isn't it exactly. and you know there's there's this idea that she loved them because they were builders and you think well that's cool but they they you know they decided to get involved in this and and they didn't really right you know she wasn't trying to be a fighter either. She, she left, she had a position, an important role in Fred Johnson's OPA and she left and decided that she didn't want to be involved with any of this stuff. And she got sucked back in. And so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's pretty tragic. I mean, she, she just keeps managing to get pulled back into things and, her family is pays the price, not her. You know what I mean? So. And yeah, on this subject, MW says, uh, shouldn't someone properly acknowledge uh, and or help Drummer for saving the Rossi by sacrificing everything? Feels glossed over. What am I missing, he says. Uh, um, yeah, I think I, he's talking I about think, season five here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think nothing. I think the, the point, I think the point is that they're, they're, it's expected, you know, it's that nobody is looking out for the belt. I think that's the, you know, maybe that's a, not a satisfying answer, but I think that that's sort of what it, it it's one of the things that it's going for, you know, it, she, if you think about the situation, she's essentially, she, she essentially a pirate working for the free Navy. And then she does in this one battle change sides, but the Rossi is an ind independent ship. It's not like she went in and, you know, won a battle for the UN or the MCRN for them to actually acknowledge it. It's, it was a, it was a, it was a selfless act of sacrifice and, you know, nobody, uh, you saw that there was a message from Naomi acknowledging it in the x-ray that didn't even exist in the actual TV show. And I think that's the point is that it's, it's kind of, 
she's not prospering or gaining from this. This is something that she's doing because she feels like it's the right thing to do in the moment. And there's a cost. And, and that's part of the reason why she doesn't want to join up with the inners, because if she helps them again, what happens, what happens if Abbasarala dies and somebody else comes into power, how are they going to treat the belters? You know what I mean? It's just, no. it's a precarious situation that they find themselves in at all times. It's a, a process of picking the lesser of two evils quite literally. And yeah, so it's a good question. And, you know, it, there's, there's not a satisfying answer because it's a bad situation. All right. Uh, before we get to drummer, drummer and Naomi, uh, we see drummer walking back to the ship, uh, uh, she, her ship to be more exact. Uh, she arrives at a checkpoint and a soldier tells her she can skip the line because she is pre cleared. And even though she wants to wait like everyone else, she's encouraged to do it. Uh, she passes Andrani here, who takes a video asking how it feels to be the inner's favorite pet. And when Drummer gets back to the Tynan, she finds Naomi waiting for her. Uh, anything to say on this interaction before me, we move on, Pete? I guess this uh, this plays... I just, yeah. I would just say that, the, you know, this is a reminder of how working with the inners would go over. Like, this is just, hey, look, this is what people are going to think of you if you do follow through with this idea. And it, and it also is, it, it makes it, it makes it plain. It makes the idea that they need to meet, why they need to meet out in the open and why they, why they need other people to witness what they're saying in the open, why they need that later. You know, that's where, I mean, this is, it's kind of felt like a little out of the, out of left field with, with Sandrani, but it makes sense in that context. You know, they have to, like they have to, they have to make sure you realize just what a decision that it it is. I mean, you think about like how characters like, um, like say Miller in season one, how he's considered an enemy to his people. This is the same kind of stuff that the drummers right on the cusp. I mean, she just brought, she just saved everyone on series, but that that's not enough to. <laughs> insulate her from the idea of her working with the inners you know what i mean yeah, i think, I think that's where it coming from saint drani is 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 why that actually works because we saw the same kind of situation you know she she had the chance to change sides they changed you know they had the chance to change sides and and didn't so let's look at this uh Christina gave us a 499 super chat and before so before we move on to the the thing with the drummer and Naomi let's talk about Amos she wants to know what's up with him book Amos was never so blase about Naomi or Jim's emotional turmoil I was shook he just he considered not going back yeah, I think what you see going on with Amos here in this episode or this season of the show is that he's starting to he's starting to think about making his own decisions. The thing about the thing about Amos and I, I I know that you know this already, Christina, because you read the books. But he you know he he uses people as his moral compass. He thinks about like how would this person do something, so. In this particular situation, he can't really square it, and he doesn't have anyone else to do. He doesn't have anyone else to take on. You know, Clarissa kind of uses him in this same way. So it's not like he can say, "Well, what would Clarissa do in this situation?" And so, you know, it, it kind of undermined his whole process whenever Holden made this decision that he just can't square. So yeah, it, it felt a little bit strange. I agree that it, it, it felt a little on Amos, some of the stuff that happened in the first three episodes, or the, you know, but I thought that they did a good job of bringing it back and then finishing it off here because now you know at the end of this conversation with Bobby that he's square. 
Like he's, he's, he's a hundred percent back on board. We know he's loyal to maybe to a fault. And you know, that's, that's everything is, is back in, in line. And I think it's, I thought it was, it was a little bit of a change, but I think it worked out pretty well. I, I, I kind of like it. Yeah, from a non-book reader perspective, uh, I th I think his reactions this season have been, they've all made the sense. I don't, I don't know about the changes they've made, but uh, his interactions with Holden and this conversation here with Bobby, they all seemed natural. Yeah, and, and we have another one here before before we move on. Uh, Robin B thought that LB died in the orange on the, the I believe she's talking about the uh, bullet when we last saw her, but she showed back up in this past episode. Did the orange, aka the bullet, not kill her? No, it it, it didn't. It didn't kill her. Um, she passed through it to destroy the proto Miller. That was his plan, and he needed help to actually – again, he needed someone in the substrate to help him pass through the bullet, the artifact from the unknown aggressors, and it didn't, it didn't kill her. She's not, really, she's not really sure what she experienced in there. They're, they haven't really gotten into it too heavily, but um, – yeah, she's all right. She she stayed there and she she studied the bullet for a period of time and now she came back through the rings and she's doing something in the Jupiter system. And she is a character that that plays uh future roles in the book 7, 8 and 9. So, if you like the character, that's another reason to really jump into the books because LV is great. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, but um, like like we said before, we saw her uh, send a message to Holden and, because Fred Johnson had the proto molecule uh, sample and Holden was trying to, I think, warn him about it. And he, Holden showed Johnson a, a message from Elvi Okoye about these unknown aggressors. So we already knew uh, she was alive. Yeah, we just, yeah, if you want to, um, if you go back... If you want to see what that scene, it's in season five, episode one. So you can go back and see her talking about that, her time um, to get to get refreshed on that if you need to. Uh, yeah, we, we clicked on that at the same time. <laughs> All right. So Melvin, Brennan, thank you so much for the $10. Good stuff from both of you. Question, is there a single more complete character arc in sci-fi television than Kamina Drummer? I can think of one, maybe Gaius Baltar. Uh, well, I, I don't, I think as far as, I mean, it, it's obviously it's subjective and it depends on, the story, but I, I think in the Expanse television show, which you're talking about all of sci-fi television, your question, um, you know, I, I think that specifically in the Expanse, there is not a better one. There's a lot of there's a lot of really good ones, but I think hers is 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 the best. I made a video about that um, about a month ago. Um and yeah, and personally, I can't think of anyone outside of that. Not right now, not right when we're in the middle of watching this. You know, who knows if you take some time and go back and yeah. What about what? What? I mean, I think right now, I'm. It's just everything's working with her story, and she's such a good encapsulation of. The overall, the overall theme of what's going on with her people, you know, it's it's really, they really did a good job of of crafting that. I would add that maybe Spock and uh, Admiral Kirk from uh, Star Trek, I think, they could definitely go head to head with Drummer. And th yeah, there are I... obviously there are obviously more characters, but it's hard to immediately remember them. Before you know, looking at all the uh, best sci-fi shows out there, it's hard to 
remember all of them right now. Yeah, I, I I'd be interested to see what people say in the comments about this. Um, because yeah, I, I I think it's a I think it's hard to come up with someone that that has such a well rounded complete kind of thing going in and you know it's it's definitely cool it's definitely a great a great character and a great uh journey that she's been on let us know in the comments what you guys think about this i mean i i no one is even coming close whenever i'm going through it babylon 5 is yeah that's that's definitely where you would look i would think mm. I don't know. Thanks for the question. I'll def if I can, if somebody comes up to it, I'll definitely fire that off. Yeah, and thank you, Charlie Buck, for the five dollar super chat. He doesn't say anything, but uh, did he follow that you. up with something? No, I don't think so. I looked at oh, okay. the actual YouTube chat as well. That that doesn't appear to be a message. All right, thanks, Charlie Buck. Okay, it's time to talk about drummer and Naomi. Uh, Naomi's claim that she's just here to see her um, isn't really, drummer isn't really buying that. She knows Naomi must have an ulterior motive. And when she learns what that motive is, which is trying to convince her to join forces with the inners against Marco, drummer just loses it. And this is some of the best acting we've seen on the show by KRG. Uh, drummer's bewilderment is depicted so clearly that you immediately understand you know, what this means for her. And what makes this worse for Drummer is that she knows Naomi is kind of right. She either waits for the bounty to go high enough that someone will kill her, or she can put a collar around her neck and hand the inners the leash. Those are her words. There are no good options here. And at this point, Naomi says, all we can do is stand by the people we love. What else is there? A drummer drops multiple F-bombs calling Naomi a self-righteous shit and she and she breaks down crying as they embrace each other. Uh, I I absolutely love this scene and it's it's hard to make make these dramatic scenes work if if you haven't if you haven't set them up correctly but uh, like we like we were saying before because of drummer's great character arc throughout uh, all of these seasons this scene really hits correctly. Now, what did you think? Yeah, this was, I mean, this was the 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 culmination of so much setup. You know, it it felt like it was going to be like cathartic, but it's the opposite, right? I mean, it, it, I I don't know. Like, I saw some people in the chat earlier saying that these two characters were boring, and you know, that's an opinion. You can have that opinion if you want. Um, but yeah, I can't, I just can't say what the opposite, how, how much of the opposite reaction to this that I had when I first watched this and like you, so many things like it's, you could talk about this for, <laughs> I mean, there's so many subtle things that go back and forth here. What, one thing that stood out to me right from the beginning, and it was all down to the performances, both of them playing off of each other, but. Kara G, whenever her when her face drops, whenever she turns her away, like she she really can't believe what she's hearing. It's almost beyond comprehension. This person that she cares for, that she trusts, comes into her house. You know, this ship is her her house, right? And and says, "Hey, I want to meet your family. You know, great to see you. And <laughs> sorry it's been so long. And yeah, her whole family's gone." But she's there because she's running an errand for the inners, you know what I mean? For her boyfriend, who obviously, uh, you know, Trummer doesn't care for, she doesn't, she doesn't like Holden, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, for multiple reasons. Yeah, yeah, for, so like, it's just, it's, you can just see it in, in, in the, in the actor's face that this is so beyond comprehension that there's nothing else that she can do except for turn away and tell her to leave. And 
that's just where it starts. You know what I mean? Like it, it goes through, they, they cycle through so many different things because what can Naomi actually say here? You know what I mean? She yeah. is, she is doing exactly what she's being accused of. And Naomi is, is, is a smart character. And so, yeah, she knows that, she knows everything that she's let done leading up to this conversation is fully on display. And it's really, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bad place for both of them because they still need to talk about this. It still needs to happen. You know what I mean? Drummer has lost everything and that's not going to change. Nobody can bring any of it back for her. And the only thing Naomi can do is say, look, I get it, but Marco's going to win and we need your help. And it's not even me, you know, it's, it's Abbasarala, the, the secretary general of the UN. So it's just, it's just super heavy stuff. Christina J added, do you think Naomi will confess to Christian her crimes or repay drummer? by facilitating things, things in uh, quotation and amends. Um, so with the, what, what do you think Naomi will confess to Christian her crimes or repay drummer by facilitating things in amends? What's your take on this? Uh, I don't really... I don't really get the question, to be honest. Do you? Do you? I'm having a little bit of trouble with it. Um, <clears throat> I think the crimes part is what's throwing me off. Do we have some clarification on this, Christina? Yeah. I think, I think that, I mean, I might... I think Naomi has a little bit of pull if that's what the question is of if she can do something or um but I'm not sure I'm not sure if there's if that's really going to make a difference at this conjuncture I mean like I was saying the real problem here is that drummer's lost everything and she doesn't have another option but to help. I mean, isn't that isn't isn't that the the big takeaway here is that even though it's a thankless situation to be in, and that she probably won't get anything out of it, what else can she do? Yeah, and she doesn't even have her family to care for in the in the ship. So I think I think that kind of helps because she's not going to be putting. Uh, Joseph and Michio in danger by joining forces with the Inners. M maybe if they were on the ship, she wouldn't do this. But uh, because they're they're not there anymore, I think uh, th that's one of the reasons she goes on to agree to this deal. Yeah, I, I and and Christina, she just uh, she just clarified a little bit. I think. Um, I think that they they didn't. I think that the, if there's one thing that's missing from this equation, it might be that they don't really show how they get to the point where Holden's able to talk Naomi into doing this thing because this is a pretty awful thing that she's doing. She's coming there with actual care in her heart for this person, but she's 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 making them a she's making them a. A, a a proposition that she knows is a bad deal, right? Exactly, and she knows this goes against everything drummer stands for. She knows how, how yeah. drummer's gonna react, and even then, she knows she has to do this because uh, Holden asked him to, and it makes sense because uh, they they're not gonna they're probably not gonna defeat Marco uh, without her help. Yeah. So, it's, so it, you know, from a, from a logical perspective, Naomi's doing the right thing, but 
obviously from an emotional standpoint this this sucks both for her and obviously even more for drummer yeah and i and i liked how she i liked how she 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 told her you know like he said she you self-righteous shit and <laughs> it, it was it was a it was an echo of her talking with Oksana at the end of last season when she was telling her you know like how much shit do i have to eat before you believe me and which you know that we know how that turned out you know what i mean Ooh. so <laughs> It, 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 I just thought, yeah, this was this the 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 apex of the emotion that that this was. I mean, if you have these two performers, I mean, and you and you're writing a season of TV, you have to figure out how to make this scene happen, right? And uh this this is the way that they put it together and the fact that neither one of them has a, a leg to stand on. Neither one of them is trying to hurt the other person, but everybody is getting hurt and there's nowhere else to go. And there's nothing either one of them can do about it. I mean, she says it in that line. I don't feel like there's a place for me in this universe. And yeah, it, it's just, it's just fantastic. And then they break down briefly at the end but it doesn't really change anything. And, you know, it's all under that same thing, why we fight, right? You know, fight for the people you love. In this case, fighting for the person that Drummer loves has cost her her family and it's going to cost her more going forward. And she's still going to have to do it anyways because there's really no other option because of the way things played out. So it's a perfect example of the belter situation and it's great to see these two belter characters have that and see that play out yeah i i think christina clarified here okay things you probably can't touch but yeah naomi forcing chrissy to do right by kamina it would be nice if she had that combo instead. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I agree with that. And like I said, if there's one thing that, that didn't get set up as well was that we didn't see how Naomi got convinced to do this. We saw Holden push back briefly saying, you know, she's not going to trust you. And then we jumped straight to Naomi showing up and announced knowing that she didn't want to see her <laughs> right. And being there. So it's pretty messed up. And I think there's a trust issue anyways underneath that. Abbasarala can tell her anything, but how do they know they're going to hold her to it? And what happens if, if Abbasarala is not in charge anymore? It's still tricky all the way around. But yeah, I agree that it would have been it would have been helpful to see or it would be nice to see her advocate for that to make sure that because once once she does turn and help the inners, there's a certain percentage of people that will never see her the same way again. She'll be a traitor to her people on some level. Yeah, but and it's, that's it's, that, that's actually what I've been wondering. Because right now, drama doesn't really control a lot of ships. I think it's not even ten ships, right? But uh, we've been hearing yeah news about um about certain stations. Uh, I guess rioting against uh, the free navy so drummer joining forces with the inners might um garner even more support because they're going after marco so so she might control uh, more ships now or like you said this could backfire and the belters a big portion of them might turn against her that's something i'm looking forward to see in the finale if uh, more ships join drummer yeah because they could lose too i mean that's the reality just side, siding with avasarala doesn't mean you're going to win and get what you want <laughs> exactly. it could mean that you get executed by the free navy whenever they take over the entire solar system so cool. there was before we get into the last i mean we could talk and uh, you know we could talk about that one scene and maybe we will come back and talk about it some more, but I think it, it, I think we need to move on to the next one because 
it's so integral and what everything we're saying is kind of setting that up. But I wanted to, I saw there was one um, super chat here that we missed and it, they, Pavel Barosh, thanks for the five pounds. And do you guys think they would finish the story as an an animated series considering the time jump and all? Mm, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's a hard I, I don't think there's anything wrong with an animated series. I just think it's a hard transition once you've had so much live action to it's it feels like a step down. And I don't I don't say that in a way of like I don't want to debate whether animation is is a fine way to do it or not. It's, it certainly could be. I just think that once it's been introduced as live action, I think it feels like when you have all of these great sets that they had built and all these amazing VFX sequences and everything else, it's just hard to, it's hard for it to feel like the same thing. <clears throat> Yeah. In that situation, I would almost think like you just start from the beginning and you start an animation, uh, an animated series that's unrelated to what happened to the live. At, you know what I mean? Yeah, just a spin off. It. A spin off. Yeah. Yeah, like a spin off, and it could be they could just redo the entire same trajectory as as what the TV show did, but just start from the beginning and and, and introduce it to a brand new audience and uh, as a different different version. I mean, you could, it, it's not un, unthinkable, but I just think that, it, you know, it feels pretty unlikely to me. Agreed. Um, I think we can move on to the ending of the episode here. Uh, it, this one ends with the meeting between Amasrala and Drummer as they join forces against Marco. Um, but it is quite clear that there is no love lost between them because uh, Drummer still doesn't fully trust Amasrala. But um, the fact that Avasarala shows up on the station, on series, actually uh, helps her um, image, I suppose. There were so many great lines here, so I'm going to pass it over to you to mention some of them and uh, give us your thoughts. Yeah, I think that... <clears throat> I think this was, I mean, I, the the thing that blew me away about this episode is that there's so many of, you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> You, you transition from one of the heaviest interview, heaviest back and forth between two characters, and then to one of the most sensational here with these two. And the way it's set up, the way she, she moves through the station and they come together, and the way it's been set up that they need to do this out in the open, they need to do it in public. And like you said, she does win a lot of credibility by coming out of her ship. Like she, she has a good security security detail and everything else. But this is pretty crazy that she's just out on a Belter station during an act of war. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Like it, it's it's pretty wild. And <clears throat> and there's already been an attack and a, multiple explosions here. Absolutely. <laughs> so that, that, Absolutely. That's really brave. And, you know, it, and, and there's, there's sympathizers for sure. And you can't really tell, you know, it, it's an insurgent force that they're up against. It's not like, you know, it, they're, they're an occupy, they're occupying the station. So yeah, it's dangerous. <clears throat> it's dangerous for her to be out there. Yeah. And I we were that, talking, we were talking about how surprised we were about the fact that you know her ship was so close when they were taking over uh series and then she actually went on it so, you know this was yeah. really surprising yeah that's one of those things like i said when i watched earlier i was like why is she actually so close to the action that seems dangerous and then if it's all just to be in service of this scene happening then i'm basically okay with it it made for good tv Indeed, especially, you know, uh, I think they uh, shook hands at the end, if, I, if I'm remembering, remembering it correctly. That, that was a good moment as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think the big thing here is that she says the system is filled with the, you know, filled with the, the graveyards of, you know, it's a graveyard of belters who trusted the inners. And 
Abasarala fires back that her planet's now covered with the bodies of people who paid the price for that. And this is, a, you know, that's a nice parallel too because Abasarala is right. A lot of people died because of their actions, the, the actions of the powerful, but it's, you know, it's not Abbas. Well, actually, you know, she did pay for it. She lost her husband and her and her son. But I mean, in general, a lot of people have suffered on both sides, and they can both make a a a decent argument for that. And Drummer is correct in saying that this was all started by the inners. So it's a great setup to continue the idea that we talked about this is not something that drummer wants to do but it is something that's actually necessary abasarala tells her that marco is going to get a lot more belters killed that's true and she and she does need her and as soon as that as soon as kamina gives in and helps her then less people will die so It's it's uh, I think it's also worth mentioning this idea that she asked her, you know, what are you gonna are you gonna remember us after Marco's dead? And she she can't say that she can only promise that she'll try, basically, right? Because she what what can she actually do? And this kind of goes back to Christina's question. She's given them plenty of reasons to hate her, but none to think she's a liar. So it's enough at the end of the day. And like you said, they shake hands, they form this union. And, you know, it, it's funny because if you think about these kinds of things historically, <laughs> right, it feels <laughs> like, oh, good, they're all, they're fighting on the same side. Everything's good. I mean, think about World War II. The, the Soviet Union and the United States worked together to defeat a common enemy it's not like they had great relations for the decades following that, right? So yeah. it's only a temporary. This is only a temporary thing, and you know, drummer doesn't really get much out of this, except except that it is ultimately the right thing to do. Yeah, there is some you know slim upside to this as well, though, because if they do defeat Marco and if the bel if the Belters are if drummer and her crew are really useful in that in that venture and if Awasarala then goes on to uh, stay as the you know remain as the um secretary general this could make things better for the belt because like Awasarala said she's not a liar she's many things but she's not a liar she, she's she's always been straight and she sticks by her word so there's this slim possibility that the outcome of this war will actually be uh, good for the belt. I'm not sure if it's going to really turn out that way, but that that's an interesting possibility. No drummer yeah, might be doing it, might be doing the belt a favor here. And that is the I mean that's the that's that's why this is brilliant too because both of these characters they understand that going in, right? It's uh yeah. they're there's a slim chance that things might get better. But as Drummer pointed out in this conversation just a few <laughs> sentences ago, she said, you know, it, 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 historically speaking, there are syst there's 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 a system, there's there's forces that make sure that they always they always lose out. It never turns out to to actually be helpful. There's generations of of experiences and cases where it didn't, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. It, it's it's great. And and it, it's you know, Abasarala is obviously powerful, but she's not magic. She can't just she can't just will it to be fixed afterwards and it'll be done. It's it's much more complicated and messy, right? Exactly. And I also wanted to ask you about something else. Um, do you also feel like you know the pandemic has really affected some of these um, scenes? This one, you know, featured a lot of people. So I'm not talking about this scene in particular, but 
uh, you you mentioned this in your episode recaps as well. There are a lot of scenes with just two people talking in a room. Those scenes are brilliant. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the the I think the the amount of scenes like that are a little bit too much for my liking. Even though, like I said, they're good. Uh, did you did you get that same impression? Yeah, I, I definitely got that impression when I first watched it. I, I think that it's it's kind of on the rewatch, and now that I was just sort of adjusted, it doesn't seem as as apparent anymore. But this whole I, I mentioned this in a previous uh, stream, like the this whole series thing, you this kind of feels a lot different than season one series, and you kind and you see how they kind of built this out of shipping containers in a way that they could multi-purpose different areas and use them for different things, but still kind of have a bit of a crowd, but because it's smaller in general, it seems a little bit more crowded because of being a smaller, smaller set. I thought, you know, if you look at the, if you look at the season one series things, I mean, it, it feels like it's a whole, there's a whole multi-layer world that's been built there and and here this this kind of feels i mean i guess this is just specifically the docks but even in that way you know the the bar that they drink at and stuff it, it all felt like it was it was kind of scaled down so that they could have less people and make it look more crowded for that pen for the pandemic yeah and i'm hoping that if if the show returns or if we get movies you know they they are able to go back to and what we saw in the earlier seasons. Yeah, um, I, I think they did a pretty good job. I, I, I think, you know, I think that they, I think it mostly works, but it, it's noticeable that, yeah. that they changed their style up. And th th I feel like that that is a, uh, you know, that's that's a result of restrictions that, that were outside of their control. Uh, we, we've got a question here we can answer. Light and man masks. Pete, Benja, do you think, uh, or can you say, if the UN treats the Belters well 30 years on? I, I don't think you can answer this one because you read the book, Pete. Yeah, I can't answer. I mean, it would be, a, a, it would be an actual spoiler. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, uh, things might be... Uh, this one's hard. This one's hard. I think, I think they're going to be treated better, but... Like like Avasarala said, no, sorry, like a character said, I, I, I can't remember which one it was that said, uh, we're all belters now. And I think that situation, the fact that Earth was attacked and is, is not the same anymore, um, maybe the belters aren't going to be treated be in a better way, but everybody, everybody's like a belter now. The system is looks like it's crumbling. And... Uh, I, I don't think the the oppression will be the same 30 years from now. That's, that's yeah, my opinion. And I, yeah, and I think that's an interesting um, idea that the, the way you draw on that, they're more likely to treat them well whenever they're in a situation when they're on their back foot, when they are actually more like belters, you know. <laughs> yeah. The, when they're when they when they're not completely dominant in the situation, but you never know. You don't know what's going to happen, and I think all of that depends on the finale, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, and guys, you can answer your you can ask your questions in the chat now because we're almost done with the episode recap. I think we can answer a few of your questions. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, what did you think about this episode overall, Pete? Um, since uh, we're done with all of the plot points, uh, uh, do you think we are ready for the finale? Yeah, I I thought I uh, I mean I, I had a general idea of how the story would would play out, anyways, from reading the book, and I think that I felt pretty good when I got to this end of this episode. <clears throat> The one thing that I thought, I thought, I think what's, I, I thought this was a fantastic episode, one of the best episodes overall. I thought that 
it was it was a little bit it was crazy how how much drummer's story had to turn in 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 like such a short amount of time but i think they pulled that off you know where she's at at the beginning compared to where she's at to make the deal at the end i think it worked the part that I guess whenever I thought about the overall story is that we don't have an idea of where they go from here. Yet we know that there is an actual conclusion coming <laughs> in the yeah. next episode, which is only 63 minutes long, which is much longer than a normal one. But it, it's it's not there's not multiple hours left anymore. There's one hour. So. I think that's where I was kind of like, well, how are they going to, how are they going to transition into the final confrontation kind of thing? Right. So uh, I, I, but otherwise, I mean, like there's so much going on in this episode and there's no weak spots. There's really no, it, it all is really working all the way across. And like we mentioned, there, there's funny, there's, there's a little bit of comedy to lighten things up. There's some, there's some heartfelt character moments. They're not all completely end of the world horrors of war type stuff. You know what I mean? So, man, I think that's, that's really realistic and that's the way it should be done because if you get action all the time, what is the point if you don't get to know the characters that are in the action if you don't care for them if you don't know their backstories and what's the point so they're doing yeah and they're doing a great job of you know setting us setting it up and making us care about all of these characters and how they interact with each other you know the this deal between avasarala and drummer is a great example of that yeah, and I, I was listening to the Kara G interview on the on the podcast when she was, she, you know, she said she would describe this show because Abbasarala says, you know, she was talking, uh, you know, that actor was talking about how why did it why did they do sci-fi because it's such great character stuff and you know it's basically because of the time period, right and. Kara G was saying that when she would tell her friends that she would call it political, political, and it's, you know, political intrigue, but with spaceships. <laughs> and I yeah, think that, that, you know, they, they got to, they really got there. They really hit that note right before the finale, right? That everything, everything led to this moment and it all makes sense and it all and it does it makes you care so much more about everything that that's going into that and you know it, it, maybe that's not for everyone i i you know i get plenty i read plenty of comments all the time and and some people have an idea that this season has that nothing's happened and i'd say yeah that's just it's probably not your cup of tea then this show because everything that needed to happen is happening I guess, like I said, my one my one fear at this point was how do they transition into everything that has to conclude? And, you know, we that's what we have to wait and see. Yeah, and we can continue with another question, this time from Charlie Buck. He asks, what has been your least favorite departure from the books? Um, I haven't read the books, but I know that um, Alex was still supposed to be here. I think uh, the unfortunate situation with that one uh, is my least favorite departure. What about you, Pete? Yeah, um, I mean, that was not something that they made a choice to do. That, that's something that had to happen. I, yeah. I think in the, in, the, in the first book, I didn't like, I didn't like how the, the crew started out being at odds with each other in the TV show. And there was a lot of tension that was sort of added. It, it makes sense on why they did it in the adaptation, but I just I just enjoyed the story better without that when I read the book. I read the book after the show, and I thought, wow, this I like the way this is a lot better. But I think that's probably the biggest thing, and it, and it comes up in other parts. Um, Naomi giving the giving Fred Johnson the protomolecule 
rather than holding giving it to them that that kind of I, I I don't really like the way that that has was received and 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 and, and it's only in comparison to what the way it plays out in the books you know what I mean I don't think it's bad I just think I liked it better whenever they didn't have that thing and it made for you know you can see why they did it in the show and it and it does work it creates a conflict <laughs> that easy yeah, easy it, but, it, easy but it, that's what it felt like if in the show to me it felt like conflict for the sake of conflict yeah you know um angel feisler asks sorry if i butchered your last name uh she wants us to give our thoughts about the x-ray which she, uh, he or she loved uh, we talked about this at the start of our stream. I think yeah, you can watch the VOD. We, I think we talked about it for ten to fifteen minutes. We, we both loved yeah. it, and yeah, there was we a super. Did, and yet, definitely go back and watch that because um, I thought there, I thought that it was it was really effective at at bringing the the story full circle. And I don't want to, since a lot of the people <laughs> have been here already saw that. I don't want to go into it again, but. It's a good question, and I agree with you. It was very, it was, I loved it too. I'm high up on the chat. Um, Pete, can you bring up the latest Super Chat? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Justin Merritt, thank you for the $5. It's a departure from the books, but I would be pleased to see Amos and Bobby hook up. It makes sense for the characters. Um, sure. I, I, I saw that, I saw that. You know, they Ty Ty made a comment about this on Twitter about they wanted to they were more interested in I think my interpretation of what he said, I'm paraphrasing, but it my interpretation was that they wanted to play with that uncomfortable, you know, kind of just play with it more than they actually wanted to, to have it go anywhere. You know that tension. There's there's obvious sexual tension, and then to kind of toy with that some. You know what I mean? So I I don't know. It's it's hard for me to say if it makes sense for the characters because it would change things later, and and those are things that I've already envisioned in the way that they they happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, and because I don't have that knowledge, for me it's. It works say, quite I, easily. I'll say this. I'll say this that it the thing that would would be troubling for me is that Amos kind of makes it explicit that he doesn't have sex with people he likes. Mm. Right? Like he goes to brothels and he he almost exclusively sleeps with sex workers. That's what that's where he's comfortable. And you know, that's a part of who he is. So if it would be it it would be a it would be a evolution of the character i think you know not just that he would be with somebody different but him getting with someone that he's so closely related with as far as you know she's not really a crew member at this point or anything but it would make it would make it would be a it would be a departure from from what he normally does But I, it would be fan. It would be a fan favorite. I'm sure there's fan fiction already out there written about that, right? <laughs> exactly. But let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I think uh, we can quickly answer this one before we check out the other super chats. Herbert Bolanos asks, "Are you looking forward to the expanse video game from Telltale Games?" And yes, I'm very much looking forward to it. I love all of their games. Maybe we talked about this in other streams as well. Uh, the ba their yeah, Batman I, series and the Walking Dead ones are great. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I don't play games, and I will definitely play that one. So that's my, that's what I can say about it. Uh, we had two other super chats, Pete. Yep. Naomi was given much more agency. Thanks again, Christina for Christina J for the four ninety nine and the show, but always seemed to be the instigator of conflict. Amos didn't even sneak peaches on board. Miss the crew love. Yeah, it's it's not really cut and dry, you know? Like, I've heard people make pretty good arguments for liking show Naomi better. 
and that and and it's exactly what Christina is saying here about that she feel she she kind of has she's kind of in a place of being a victim i think in the books it, it, it it's not it's complicated obviously but there are some things that i like that they did but i think i think that generally she is more likable in some some situations and maybe maybe she's a little bit too too competent in the books like maybe you want to make her a little bit more flawed because she's pretty badass all the way around that you know what i mean she she's she's the she's the voice of reason she's the She's a really good engineer. She figures out a lot of things. So, you know, there's 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 definitely an, an argument to be made that she's kind of like too 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 powerful or too perfect in the books. But at the same time, it, you know, it can backfire if if she feels like cuz she's she's the one belter on board in the first place. So, if she's always the one that does something that kind of goes against everyone else, then it kind of <laughs> makes it kind of otherizes her. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, it's a difficult, I guess it's, it's kind of difficult to find the sweet spot in that to where she, she's believable. And I think they do, I think they pulled it off, but there's a lot of people that like this key up on that idea of her giving the proto molecule to Fred Johnson as a reason to to dislike the character what um this other one doesn't have any uh, uh yeah it's... another one without without a message i think they want they just they just wanted to show their support yeah i was just i was just sorry i was just scrolling through to see if there was a follow up to it but yeah thank you the Shu Chen for the five dollars. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, are you going to bring the super chat up or should I read this? Let's yep. just do that real quick. Thanks. Uh, Tian Martin asks if you had a chance to do a Volcom role, uh, who, what would you play or who, I guess? Um, this one's difficult to answer, but I would definitely want to be a Martian. I always really like them the most, yeah. Especially, you know, Duster. Uh, with, yeah. Uh, and I, I always kind of wish they showed more of them, but I, I was glad with with what we've got so far. I guess. Well, now you can now you can upgrade to Laconian. Oh, true. Maybe you'll be <laughs> we'll else. see how that maybe. turns out. <laughs> maybe that's maybe there's a future in that for you. Uh, what about uh, you? Pete? I would be a I would be a belter for sure. They're the most interesting. They live in space. But I mean, you know, that, that one of the things that is 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 fun about the show is that they all have their own unique thing about them that that makes them, you know, that that the solidarity of Martians, you know, it it kind of turned into a militaristic um, you know, extreme okay. but you know the actual solidarity of working on a generation's project of building something together is is obviously pretty cool. I guess I like them because they're they're similar to the Spartans, and I always liked them. They remind me of uh, Spartans, so that's why I like the Martians a lot. You know, not yeah. these, not not really easy to compare those, but um, the the um, this, I guess. The warrior culture is a little bit similar. Yeah, this this one here it says, "I wish they showed the political sides of Mars, like with Earth." I think we lost the last link with Mars important ones in this episode. Yeah, there. A lot of the stuff with Mars happens off screen. I think they did a pretty good job of bringing it back. You know. Through Bobby and and Alex, 
I think that, I mean, that's such a key role. That's such a key factor in how everything plays out, how we got to this place that we're at right now. So it would be, it would be interesting to see more of that. I guess though, you know, when they're writing that, they, they kind of knew where they were going with Laconia and, and we get, we're getting a little bit of that through strange dogs. And, and then, you know, you get a whole lot more of that in the books that come after book six. Uh, I I really, I I really like how, I really like how the, the collapse of Mars and the, and the, and the, and the, and the way that they're, what they're doing, their project loses its relevance, how that creates that situation where, you know, Marco and Duarte can, can rise up in the vacuum and, how they how Duarte especially twist that idea, that dream of Mars. And you know, we've only seen a little bit of him in the TV show, but you can see that you know, he he's pretty he's pretty good at at talking to people in that same way that 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 uh Marco is is good at talking to groups of people. Uh, Sidro C oh. says, "How would you have felt if they replaced Alex's character with new actor?" I thought that it might be a bad idea, uh, just because uh, it, we, you already had five seasons with the same same guy. I mean, you know, they switched Abasarala's husband, and it was weird. And he's kind of a secondary character. What do you think about this? Uh, yeah, just too many seasons. Uh, if if it, if it was a more minor character, I would be fine with replacing him. But uh, hard, you know, hard to swallow that change after fi- after five seasons. It, it just it would just look really awkward. <laughs> At least now, you know, they 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 mention him sometimes, but um, his his story had a had a um reasonable conclusion i think especially for number yes. readers but um so you know i think replacing him would be a little bit cheesy yeah and i think i think they i think they they didn't really have a lot of good options but i think they did what they could it would be super weird if we just had some <laughs> rando even if it was a really good rando it would feel like a rando in in the pilot's chair, you know, and yeah. I think it would it would it wouldn't it wouldn't be as seamless as it, it sounds like it could be, but you know, it's like you said, it, they gave him a pretty they gave him a pretty heroic ending, and I I really think I really like the 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 scene with Amos at the end of the season whenever he's talking to Naomi about it. He talks about that going out for the, you know, going out for the people that you care about, you know, it's, it's actually a really nice, it it really ties in nicely with what he, his epiphany in this episode, right? Amos's uh, epiphany in this episode, that that is what matters. So I think they just, I think that's, you know, they just did the best they could. And I would, I would, I, I was against the, um, I was against the idea of recast. We got another just chat Merit. from Just Merit. Yeah. Thank, thanks again for the the five dollars. As we near the end, I think their choices for the show and how much they had to cut change all makes sense. I think that's what your son is, and they've done an excellent job in season six. And yeah, I I think um again, I think this is doing the best with a bad situation. I think that it could have been better if it was eight maybe even 10 episodes or if they just had you know a little bit more time in each ep- each of the six episodes to let uh, some things breathe or or develop things a little bit more but i think they have done a fantastic job i mean i was nervous as everyone whenever i heard it, it was six going to be six episodes and i knew how much story there was left to tell and thought that six sounded like it would probably work but still wanted it to be more <laughs> anyways you know what i mean because no. there's so much good stuff that that's possible that when they have a little bit more time but i think that they 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 did it pretty well i mean they 
story wise, they they had already moved some stuff up. A lot of a lot of drummer stuff was already moved up that that took up a lot of of book six, and then they just made the whole railgun thing a mystery on on uh, Medina rather than following the installation and how that all plays out in the part before that. So I thought that worked. I thought that worked fine. I don't think we really needed to spend more time on Medina station to get the same amount of understanding of what happened there. You know, it might've been fun, but I don't think it was necessary. Yeah. And I think if they had more episodes and I think they might have shown us a little bit more, uh, Laconia stuff as well, and I think that would have made me uh, more invested in that story. So I think I think from from that from that point of view, more episodes would have been a lot better. Uh, but but the yeah. but the uh, but the other stuff, you know, the the war between the Free Navy and the Inners, I don't think that feels rushed to me. But uh, like I said, I, I haven't read the books. Well, from 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 my perspective, that that stuff doesn't feel rushed at all. Yeah, and that's kind of the issue with it. That's the kind of the issue with the story, and we talked about this in the very first stream. The structure of this feels a lot different because the conclusion is pretty inevitable. It's you know it's a war, and you know it's going to come to an end eventually, and everything kind of just. It 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 takes all the it takes all the stuff on the side out of the picture because everything everyone is tied into this thing that's all going in the same direction. So I think a lot of why this season seems different is more about story than it is about how many episodes or or any of the other stuff. It's just that there's a natural conclusion at the end of this season. That's why it makes sense that if you have to, you can stop it at the end of book six instead of say like at the end of book five that would be pretty awful and and therefore the story just moves in that direction and there's nothing that you can there's not too much that you can do on the side to prolong that um what else do we see here in the comments i i'm not seeing any questions that many questions so what what were your thoughts about the about this episode? Oh, uh, uh, it you asked me mine, but we yeah we didn't I get I, I like the episode yeah I like the episode on its own and what it sets up in the finale. But I but I feel like this could have been maybe not the midway point of the season, but but episode episode seven or eight in an in an in a ten episode season maybe. We could have had two or three more episodes after this. That's what it feels like to me. The episode on its own is great. All the character moments, all the interactions, especially the Naomi drummer one. I absolutely love that. Uh, but mm -hmm. um, to me, it feels like um, I, like I want at least two or three more episodes after this agreement between Avasarada and drummer. And it bums it bums me out that we're only gonna get. 60 more minutes of this so, yeah so, that, that, obviously <laughs> yeah it, i mean do you have do you have uh i've seen a lot of people that say that same thing that you're saying and then i see a lot of people saying there's no way that they can wrap this up in 63 minutes how how, how uh, where are you on the scale of whether you think they can pull it off or not i think i think they can pull it off but uh Compare, you know, compared to how they did things earlier this season and how they did stuff in uh, season five with Marco, the finale might feel rushed because th they've intentionally they've intentionally slowed things down, you know, to ha to give characters these moments. So uh, the finale itself, the big battle, that that one might be that might feel a little bit rushed. That's that's what I fear at this moment. It, it, I don't think it's gonna suck or anything, but uh, when when I just go back and you know, watch the rest of season five or the start of season six, 
I, I feel like the finale will be will feel a lot quicker than those parts. Yeah, it's you know not much that you can do about that. Yeah. I I I get the I get the sentiment. And it's one that a lot of people have, but I, I, you know, I, obviously I already watched it and I think that most people will be, there's going to be a certain percentage of people that are upset because they don't realize that it's just the end of book six. It's not the end of the bigger story. There's going to be a percentage of people that like uh, all of us that are just upset because it's over. So they're going to look at it more critically than than what it you know than than what's realistic i think and then otherwise i think it, it's you know it's it's pretty satisfying and they did a pretty good job and i don't want to give anything away but i think that it'll be generally regarded as a good series finale with people detracting for those reasons that i just mentioned uh, J Justin asked again, he said, what did they cut that you wish you could have seen? For me, it was Anderson Dawes playing all the factions on Tycho. Yeah, I was really disappointed that Anderson Dawes died off screen. I was really no. kind of confused in the last season whenever Fred Johnson died because I liked his, I liked his, his, the stuff that he did in season five or in season book six. And so I was wondering how they were going to do that. And they kind of just didn't, you know, and I, I, I miss that. I, I do miss the, the Anderson Dawes and how that played out with the, the rest of the belt. We see that with, with drummer, but she's kind of solo, you know what I mean? Just, she just brought this guy Walker in and, you know, there in the books there is some resistance amongst ba belters with power that don't want to side with the inners, but but aren't interested in working with Marco either for political reasons. Um, just quickly answering this, A K C D eleven R two thousand and twelve asks: Is Karina still alive? No, she is way prized. Yeah, so uh, dead, I think, is is the way that you would describe that. I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, she's in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> she might uh, still be out there floating somewhere. Uh, Pavel Baros asks, uh, do you think the show does a good job of explaining uh, the proton molecule and what it actually is to uh, non-readers? Um, I think... I think, you know, they've done a pretty good job in, especially in the earlier seasons, but that's, that's kind of the point of the proto molecule mystery. They don't have to do, they, they don't have to explain it a lot because it is, it is the mystery. They have to give us bits and pieces here and there. And I think they've done that really well. But the fact that it slowed down over the course of um, these last couple of seasons definitely <laughs> bums me out. Yeah, but, but, I, I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot to what you're saying there, but it. it's supposed to be mysterious. That that's always supposed to be mysterious. It, it, the, that that's part of why it dri it drives the action the way that it does is because no one really understands it. So as readers, we don't really need to, or viewers in this case, we don't really need to understand it either. We want to, and that and and that's why it's compelling. I think the show did a reasonable. Um, you know, for the, for where we're at in the story, they don't really make a lot of things explicit, like with characters saying them out loud about like, you know, the, the proto molecule is the, the way of building roads for this other civilization. Like they don't really get that specific in, in describing it and understanding it until about the seventh book in, uh, in the, in the books. So you really shouldn't. You're supposed to have questions about it and what it does, and and so I think they did a pretty good job. I, I think that they, it's just a the way they structured the story. There's the unfortunate reality that they have to 
you know, that the ring gates and what it does, what the protomolecule does is open the ring gates and that changes things in the solar system. So that causes a conflict that they have to move past in books five and six before they can, before it becomes relevant again, you know, that's just, that's just the story's longer than what they have to work with on the, the show. That's the big problem, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. How about Holden losing important influence in season six versus book six? The Belter stories forming coalition. Yeah. Um, so this is he's talking about these videos that that Monica's making. That was something that Holden was doing, and that does relate, David, exactly to what I was just talking about with Fred Johnson and that start that part of the story being cut. It, without Fred being there, not having someone who's moderate OPA, you know, someone who's willing to work with the inners when they have to, you know, that's what we're missing there. So he, it, you know, Holden couldn't really do that in in this. He's been flying around in the ship, killing belters. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's been his mission for six <laughs> months since since the end of last season was to go and literally kill free Navy partisans. What I think about him losing his important influence. I mean, I think that Holden is, is, I don't think he, he, I think we all know who the character Holden is and what he believes and, and, and what side he lands on in that. So I don't, I don't think he really lost any influence or any credibility. It's just that, in the show, they made it a lot more of a point that he disabled those that he, I mean, he did that in the, in the story and in, in the books, he also didn't, he wasn't in charge of, of much of anything in that battle because he had Fred Johnson and his crew on board. So it's sort of a trade-off, but I think that I don't think he's really lost any anything overall. He, he's he's just uh, he's just doing some different things because of how the structure of where everyone's at is a little bit different. Uh, Volk Volky Volk Volkman asks: Do you think there's enough material in the books to create a spin-off episode? Maybe uh, he wanted to say spin-off series because he says similar to Battle Battlestar Galactica Z Razor. Uh, what could it be about? He asks. Uh, I'm not really familiar. Are you familiar with Razor? I think it. Um, did is this the one that had only one season and got cancelled? I, no, I think that's something different. Yeah. Oh, that that's the that's the planet that got annihilated. Wasn't Razor a, a mini movie then? I I guess you know could they do a mini movie like a spin off? They could do, um, no, I mean, nothing that's, uh, nothing that's substantial. They could do a lot of, they could do a lot of the stories in, in the rings after the fact. There's a couple of novellas that, that kind of go there. I think it would be difficult to do anything Caprica, that's what that's the, yeah. the, the that was the series that they had. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking of when I read Razor at first. Um I think if they were going to do a spin-off series that didn't involve the crew of the Rossi, then you could do it on Laconia. Um you could you could you could make you know there there's obviously something going on there. You could have uh people on that side of the story see it from their perspective. Um, Strange Dogs is a novella that exists there. There's a couple of other ones as well. You could have any number of things, and and it's hard to it's hard to say without talking about what happens in the finale. But you could have a there's there's definitely branches that you could go on and and tell compelling stories inside this universe. One of the issues is though that I don't think that Ty and Daniel have any interest in writing those. You know, that would be something where they'd bring new guys in and they'd be making something that didn't exist up, which could still be good because, 
it's a nice world. They did a lot of work in building this world up. So it's ready to move in. They, but they would have to, you know, they'd have to put it in someone else's hands. I suppose this is where we can bring up, um, the, the video game again. It's, it's not going to be, uh, in the present time, I think it's going to be about drummer's past when she was a, a pirate. Uh, you know, they're doing some stories like spinoffs, but, uh, they might not be movies or TV shows. They might come in the form of um, ga video games if if this one is successful, if the first one is successful. Yeah, that, that yeah. There's a there's a ton if you go backwards. I know that they. I know that I've I've read things that Ty and Daniel are especially opposed to prequels and being Ooh. involved with <laughs> anything that involves prequels, but. I think they I think they probably consulted on the game either way so you know it's they they sold the rights you know that Alcon owns the um the IP this quasi misu says um Oberon the, the spelling's a little bit off here but o Oberon is what I was thinking of when I was just talking about the novellas that that's a Oberon is a system through the rings that they have a um they have a they got one of the good planets. That's what the novella mm. kind of comes down to, right? They have a planet where their their ecosystem is kind of um, it doesn't. It's not as 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 different as it, it can coexist. Like plants from Earth can coexist there with their their local fauna and. There's an, a character from one of the er earlier stories that pops up there and. Yeah, you could do a you could definitely do a spin-off series there. We have a five dollar super chat from Alex Brecht. Very Thank you. Interesting question there. <laughs> Very interesting. I'll have to think about that. But no, thank you for the four ninety nine. We really uh, appreciate that. Justin Merritt asks, as a non reader, who do you guess dies in the finale? Which big or biggish characters? I I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure Marco's gonna die. I think that's where this is going. But I'm a little bit certain. I'm a little bit less certain about Philip. But I think he might sacrifice himself. You know, turn on his father to basically win to basically win the war for the inners because of um, because of what he because of his knowledge of the disarmed missile. Uh, so Marco and Philip. I don't think anything's gonna happen to Drummer or the Rossi crew, and anybody on the Rossi. Which other major characters uh, can we even think about? Yeah, I'll tell you that when I was watching this, and as a as someone who has read the books the first time, I felt I felt pretty I felt pretty uneasy about Clarissa at one point. Ooh. Going into the Azor Dragon situation, just because of the way that it was unfolding, and of course she she survived that. I felt like Abasarala oh. was suspect because of the fact that she was out there next to Ciri, so close to the action. We don't know how that's going to play out yet. Um, but yeah, I was worried that they might kill off anybody because it was the last season, you know, and Fred Johnson in the, in the, in the normal storyline, Fred Johnson dies at this, at this point. And so I was wondering if they were going to have to inject a death to kind of, you know, add some, add some drama, but we'll see next episode. I mean, I think that, I think that there I think that people should feel I don't think everyone should feel safe considering what's going on at the ring. Yeah, I think people are commenting about Avasarala. Yeah, I forgot about her. And she the fact that they're hinting at her health. Uh yeah. It, it might and, and I don't know how old I I I don't really know how old she's supposed to be in the TV show. Like she's much older in the books. Hmm. You know, she's white haired and, you know, she's physically frail as things go on. They they live a lot longer and they, they have better 
um, you know, medical science and non, you know, drugs that anti-aging drugs that help you, you know, not only live longer, but your body's in better condition. But and we've got we've got the strange dogs now. <laughs> Even if people die, we don't know what's gonna happen. That's the thing. That's the thing about this finale, right? Just wheel them, just wheel them on out into the glade, and and <laughs> the dogs will the dogs will hook you up. Exactly. They don't even ask for anything in return. Or just, do they? It, well, I mean, I didn't see anything. <laughs> Did you see anything? It seemed like they haven't seen anything yet. It. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? It, they're just adorable little dog-looking proto molecule uh, creatures. By the way, Christina asked earlier if uh, you'd you'd uh, marry her voice with uh, if you want you know she wants to marry your voice. That's that's interesting. What? She wants to marry your voice. That's oh really? That's what she said. Yeah. That's funny, you know, because <laughs> obviously anybody who's anybody out there has at one time or another recorded their voice and had to hear it. Ooh. And you know how how that is. And one of the things about being a YouTuber that is insane is that you have to do that as a part of your job every day. Talk into a microphone, then listen to it and edit it. And you know that it's just it just sounds wrong because you usually hear it through your inner ear, right? Yeah, I, I think I'm getting used to it now, though. It's been a year since I started making videos. Yeah, you get used to it. I, but I think that, you know, you never really get over it, though. You always think that you sound worse than everybody else does. Definitely. For example, my voice, when I listened to it, I couldn't believe it because it's rather sleepy. <laughs> because I, n I never thought of it that way. Uh, it's my natural voice, though. So Yeah. Uh, it doesn't feel that way to me when I'm speaking normally. But uh, when I started making, you know, uh, videos... I definitely came to that realization. Yeah, I, I had someone tell me, I, I saw a comment that made me so annoyed. You know how sometimes when you're scrolling through your things and you see one that just really <laughs> makes you irrationally annoyed. I, I got, I had one yesterday right before I sat down to eat and eat my dinner. And someone said, someone said in the comment, it, you you talked you you decided to talk specific you, you know you you slowed down your your speech pattern so you could make the video longer and get more view time i i figured you out and, <laughs> and and stopped watching when i realized that this was your plan and i'm thinking you know you're giving me too much credit there i'm just trying to get through it you know what i mean i'm not scamming on how i can get a couple <laughs> more seconds of view time by slowing down my 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 cadence my natural um pronunciation or whatever but what does this one say thank you again christina for your 999 abuse victims don't typically confront their abusers it's romantic it's a romanticized tv viewpoint but ultimately philip is damaged and unable to fully access his actions yeah and that's really you know that's really the you know, I I think you get, it gets lost sometimes how how messed up things are for Philip. He, I mean, he's literally a a child soldier. He grew up. That's the only way he can get validation is through his is doing what his father wants, and his father is obviously has bad intentions and and doesn't protect him or even you know give him the opportunity to have a semblance of a healthy existence. Yeah. I, that, I think that's one of the things we've talked about the most uh, in these live streams. And uh, it's one of the burning questions about the finale. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, Philip we're going to get there, aren't we? Uh, yeah, next week. Yeah, was, we're, we're actually going to find out. This week, actually, sorry. Yeah, in just a few days. In just a few days, the expanse will be over. I'm lucky to be It'll able be to done. watch the finale tomorrow. So you've already watched it, so you're quite lucky in yeah, that. Gonna, you don't have to wait. Yeah, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the uh, um the preview today, and then I'll be I'll be 
going in to start working on my finale stuff. From there. Uh, yeah. I think but yeah, I haven't rewatched it since I watched it the first time and I I um I'm really looking forward to it. It's you know, I I I had to Let's see. Are you going to do a live stream after finale? Yeah, we do need to, to figure that out. We're going to do uh, we're We've been doing it on Monday because of other shows, but for the finale, it feels like we should move it much closer to the actual finale. Yeah. Uh, I'll be letting you know. Make sure you do check my my Twitter or my my uh, post feed here on YouTube. I'll, I'll try to get that out because, I mean, this is a one-time event, and, you know, I really, really enjoy this this story and I'm pretty bummed out that it's coming to an end and um, I want to definitely try to make the most out of it. So we're, mm-hmm. we'll be going for what seems like we, we both live in really odd time, time zones and, and they don't match up with each other either. So it's going to take some thinking, but um, you know, you can, you can hit me up on on Twitter or I just posted something about this live stream yesterday on, on YouTube. So either one of those places or the comments of this actual video, whenever it goes live, you know, whenever once it's published as a, as a video on demand, you know, let us know what times sound best because um I ha- I do have to edit my video, my finale video. That takes quite a long time, and I can't do that until the actual episode comes out. So I can't do it like right when the finale becomes available. But maybe Saturday. Yeah, I think that's that's a realistic possibility. And most people would have watched the finale by then. And even if they haven't, they could uh, watch it on Saturday morning or noon, and then we could go live. I think that's yeah. that's the sweet spot. And I mean, I would do more. I would actually do more than just one stream at this point, too. I mean, I have some other videos I want to work on, but this is a big deal. I want to talk about it some more. I was talking to Aaron from Bald Move yesterday, and he, he wasn't able to make it for this time. So maybe we can set something up to bring him on that might not even be... Or even a preview in a couple of days before the finale. Like I'm definitely open to doing more because this is just it's just coming to an end at this point. Yeah. We we might have another guest as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think that we have at least one for the finale stream and maybe some others, so I'll let you know about that. Okay. I think uh we mentioned the time zones there, and this is, I think, a good time to end it. Yes, uh, yes, it's what five a.m. where you're at right now, or uh, close 30? to it. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I I think that we should probably wrap this up here. Thanks everyone for coming out and sticking around. We'll um, we'll be back at least one more time, but maybe a couple of times before this is all over. Do you have anything you want to plug or you want to talk about before we go? My sure thing. I, uh, you can check guys, you can check out my, uh, YouTube channel. I think the link to it is down below in the description box. It's Benja TV. I'm going to cover the finale as well. I haven't been doing a uh, weekly breakdowns. I only did the premiere. I might post mine uh, mine a little bit earlier than you, so you you can basically warm up, guys, before Pete's big video. I'm also covering a new western by the name of 1883 on my channel at the moment, and we'll, we'll I'll also be um, making videos about um, Resident Alien and Billions. Those will be later in January, so definitely check out my channel. Thank you for inviting me on again, Pete. These have been great, and uh, the chat has been awesome as well. Thank you for watching, guys, and asking your questions and commenting. We're trying to read all of your comments, but, you know, it's hard to get to all of them. So, thanks for watching, and thank you for reminding me on. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll have my video out 
after the finale airs, uh, the embargo doesn't lift until noon the next day. So I've been trying to follow that, but we'll see. And maybe, maybe that one might come out a little bit earlier. And um, yeah, so check my, check my Twitter or my, my posts here and definitely we'll be back to stream before the season's over. So thanks again. And I'll talk to you soon.